Everybody's ready to go. Epic. <laughs> Truly. <laughs> it said Bowers Marine man. We still love Bowers. There we go. That's it. <laughs> yeah, man. That's, that's all we had. That's, 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 that's the it. intro from our, our two week vacation, and you come back with that. That was that's the intro it. from two years ago when we started. It's still good too, man. It still holds water, man. That's epic. I love that thing. I'll get with you and get the new one for next week. Don't worry about it, man. <laughs> He's done anyway. That's <laughs> true. He's retiring. Yeah, what'd you mean by that? I'm done. It, it, Travis comes on a minute ago and goes, I'm done. I'm like, with what? <laughs> Smallmouth crush? Life? I mean, what? Come on, expand. Tell us what you're... What's going on in that brain of yours right there, pal? Which part, dude? Where do I even start? I don't know. Something's going on in Cape Vincent. Would you like to share with the rest of the group? <laughs> Something. So I'm going down a bank today at 30 a.m. All right. Next thing I know, it's 12 o'clock. <laughs> I look at my guy, I'm like, do you know what time it is? Yeah. He's like, what the hell happened? So you I think go, you got I transported don't... again? I think there's something in the simulation that's messed up. I think my universe and my experience is something isn't resonating. Something's wrong. I want to know in the comments, did time fly today for you guys? In the morning, no. between the hours of 6 a.m., and 12 p.m. Can't say that it did. Did not did for me. Little, did did a little weeding. <laughs> Yard needed tending to. <laughs> Had two meetings before. Maybe it's because I wasn't fishing on slick calm water on the Great Lakes and I was working. <laughs> Time is different. <laughs> no, something's going on today. Something. There was a glitch. Something's wrong. I'm glitching right now on the live stream. Well, it's bothering uh, me, dude. It would too. I I think maybe because you're you're just no. kind of like you're fishing. No. Like I looked at your story last night. You're by yourself driving on the lake. There was no waves. And so you're just in like vacation mode. And your brain mm. is in vacation mode. Mm. It I think that's what your experience is called vacation mode. Because when you're on vacation, you don't you're not tuned in to like time because time doesn't really mean anything. It's like I, I don't know. I, I had to ask what day it was several times when I was on vacation down the outer banks. You know, sand, you're fishing every day. I mean, I was still tuned into email and working pretty much every day, but mornings and evenings, but during the middle of the day, I wasn't really tuned in to what day it was. You lose track of time. So I think it's vacation brain mode. Is what you just experienced in the deepest sense. You're able to breathe, relax. You're in your universe. You know, that's, that's where you want to be born on the great lakes, you know, died on the great lakes, reborn again on the great lakes. Not when an hour turns into five minutes, bro. Well, I still think it's fish in vacation mode. It's kind of like that. Did you catch them? Can you remember catching any fish? After 6.30, you're going down a bank. Did you catch any fish? Or did you catch a lot of fish? Uh, you know the you know the old saying, time flies when you're having fun? Mm. So if it was a grinder and you caught zero, which we know you didn't because it was a magical day, the time flies when you're having fun. It's an old adage that seems to hold true today. We'll go with that one. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, man. There's always so a logical explanation. 
I want to thank everybody for hanging out with us, all the usuals in the house. Bo Judd, Kuda. Sup? Hey, anybody new tonight? Yeah. Frank, Frank Scalish Jr. Let's see. Let's see, man. I didn't really yeah. advertise this. Yeah, Clint Allard, he seems new. He's talking about OBX. That's right, man. You know how it gets when you're down there, man. Fish in the Southeast, he's here. Kobe, oh, yeah. Michael, Vince, Darius. <laughs> That's right, Darius. Every day you're breathing is vacation. Word, man. <laughs> so who's new? Well, here we go. Jay Roberts says he's new. So welcome, Jay. All right. Yeah, there you go. You. From Ontario. Hello, John D. <laughs> I'm old Brian Masters. <laughs> so, Travis, yesterday, obviously, the Elite Series wrapped up on St. Lawrence slash Ontario. Do you have any big takeaways from that? Any surprises? They broke the century mark. Two people did. Pure smallmouth for the first time. The big, I think Corey wins Johnston it. had the biggest smallmouth bag ever in the Elite Series. Did anything surprise you from that? Or was it pretty much what you expected? I think it was what what I expected just because of the conditions. So basically what happened was the lake was, I would say, for the most part, calm, maybe a slight ripple in some areas. There was a little bit of wave action here and there. Don't get me wrong, depending on where you were at. But we had high sun pretty much the whole tournament. And you go shallow and you can see everything down in the water and so you're able to uh you're able to target those bigger smallmouth you're able to target every fish you see instead of blind casting and randomly going along and working your baits you can specifically hit fish see how they react and get them to bite so it was just a amazing four days of fishing out here really Absolutely. How about, the rook, how about the rookie taking the cake, man? Yeah, I actually had him on a podcast. I don't know if I aired it yet or not. Well, how about that? So you, one of your regional studs. It wins seems in the like league. everyone who's been on the Small Mouth Crush podcast has won a bat <laughs> open. <this year. laughs> you're picking, you're picking the good ones, then, man. Uh, That's why the regional Rick studs, Smith. right? I'm sure there's a few others. Good job, Alex. Researching those cats. And Travis too, man. <laughs> so I just looked it up too, Travis. I think I think that American Bass Club was scheduled to have that big open tournament, but it looks like they moved it back to October, assuming just to not conflict with the Elite Series. But is that something that you're still going to look at jumping into in the first week of October? Well, they still got my money, so. <laughs> there you awesome. go, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Wow. And so then what too, else, man? Since, yeah, since the last time we talked, Travis, I wanted to bring you up, get your thoughts on this. So there was two big announcements in the electronics game. So Hummingbird came out with their target lock. And then you, oh, and then you had Garmin come out with the LiveScope XR that I think it goes out to about 500 feet. You can see. Could you mm -hmm. see yourself using one of those to anything stick out to you about those new products? Uh -huh. So here's what I know. My Hummingbird, so I run three different brands. The old Hummingbird does what all Hummingbirds do after four, five, six months. Screen starts flickering and gives me bars across the line. And I have to power off and cross my fingers when I power it back on, then it works. Uh, so that started up, of course, on, on the Hummingbird Helix, which is typical of Hummingbirds. They go back every year. Um as far as the Lorentz is concerned, today, Lorentz started flickering weird stuff and basically started hitting waypoints every second on the trail. And so I got a whole bunch of <laughs> like, 100 waypoints before I got so mad I just ripped the cord out of the thing. Then I'm like, oh, I'll turn it back on a little later. 
the screen just starts clicking all by itself. <laughs> uh, so that was today. Um, so obviously, I have a lot of. I'm having some issues right now. Um, I hopefully the unit works tomorrow. We'll see. Um, I have the new live scope transducer for my Garmin right now. I got that on the boat. Um, I'm impressed with it. And the newest transducer, I don't know, man. I'm fine with what I'm sure I'll get it if I have to, but sure. Not this year, but I'll get it next year. Uh, I got the um, HDS 12 live. Well, hopefully you can get that worked out before this weekend because that's the, the big event. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, let's talk about the weather, shall we? You ain't going to see the weights. We got an ABA on Saturday as well. You're not going to see the weights you saw at the Elite Series, that's for sure. Um, but, yeah, Smallmouth Crush Open, you guys. If you want to jump in, you still can. That's Sunday the 24th. Jeez, people. What do we got so far? How many people signed up? I don't know. You got to talk to JP. Okay. Um, Who's fishing so, that's on right now? Anybody watching oh, fishing? I just got Kurt, Curtis Richardson. He just messaged me. Um, he wants to know if he can fish solo. Why not? Yeah. Um. Where were we? Anyways, yes. Yeah, so. Weather is going to be interesting. Um, I don't want to give up any, I don't know, what should I say, thoughts right now. Sure. Because I know that people are right. going to be prior, fishing. Minute, prior but, to the ABA, yeah, man. Yeah, but I'm screwed at this point. Okay. <laughs> Why are you screwed? If it's dark and windy, I ain't catching them. Oh, you can't even catch them random casting? Ah, who wants to go random casting, bro? That's all I do on the back of your boat, bro. I catch them. Uh, hey, Travis, real quick. Could you close that window behind you? You can see the delivery guy dropping off more sandbags in the driveway. It might be a little <laughs> distracting to the viewers. I'm telling you guys, Eric, you and I are going to have a tough time. Okay. Okay. Well, that'll, that'll let fine. We shouldn't win. First of all, it's not my tournament. I'm just promoting it, and my name's on it. What do you mean it's not your tournament? It it's is run by a, a bass club. Gino is the one to blame for anything that goes wrong. I'm so confused right now. I don't even know what you're saying, man. What are you trying to like? Are you trying <laughs> let, to preempt let, some catastrophe or something? What? Let me bring on the, that, the, that, the, that, the, that, the that's totally the way to Let that's, me bring on the tournament director, JP. Here's the deal. You guys can talk about live scope, 360. 2D sonar, $30,000 in graphs. Those mofos went up there and they sight fished with their eyeballs in two feet of water and absolutely destroyed that place last week. Mm. Destroyed it. They were not looking at crap. You can take that, meg, that, that mega live lock and you can stick it up the rock's candy ass. They didn't even need With the conditions they had, they didn't need no electron. <laughs> That's the fact. The fact is, every dog has his day, right? That some is tournaments correct. set up for shallow sight fishing, some set up for offshore. But guess what? The tin boat man, he's always fishing shallow, right? That's right. You can have the best I don't know, man. in the world. And guess what? Saturday, I fished a tournament up in Ticonderoga. And? Some team came in with 25 pounds on five fish. And guess what? They were fishing out of a 1989 ranger with no electronics okay and they had 25 pounds on five fish i guess that they were just flipping grass right yeah they were flipping something <laughs> i mean right i mean who's looking at their electronics when you're flipping beautiful milfoil nobody exactly. i mean real quick before we get into our tournament i just got a phone call that giant tournament got moved to october did you hear that yes okay okay as long as you heard that that's fine okay good. guys good deal good for us Here's but, the deal. JP, JP, I'm going to text you something, but keep going. Okay, here's the deal. We got about 20 plus entered. My phone hasn't stopped ringing. 
for about a week and a half about guys wanting to sign up at the ramp. Perfectly fine. Sign up at the ramp. Perfectly fine. Fish by yourself. I got a guy right now. He's fishing by himself. Somebody wants to pony up to 250. I'm sure he'll let you pop in his boat. You know what I mean? Drive out, pop in. Yeah. For you. Yeah. We got we got guys running the live release boat. We got a guy weighing the fish. This thing is going to be the most professional team tournament New York's ever seen. What's the weather forecast right now? Absolutely. Hey, what? <laughs> what? JP, real quick. Uh, real quick. Uh, someone Let's wants see. to know here, what, what is the ABA payout? Is it guaranteed first five grand if you have over 50 boats or 60? 60, 60 boats, five grand. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of guys fishing the smallmouth crush open that don't fish the ABA. So I'm really hoping those guys will support the ABA because they're supporting us. And hop in that tournament on Saturday. Gotcha. Yep, yep, so, yep. Uh, the weather, the weather, to Eric, for for our tournament isn't looking too bad. It's, I mean, it's doable. Um, the 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 week lead, this whole week leading up to it. I mean, you're up there, Travis. It doesn't look like it's going to be any good after uh, tomorrow. No. So yesterday, uh, so I had uh, two clients come in from Louisiana uh, on Saturday and Sunday. And we, they've never experienced, you know, this type of fishing and it was ridiculous. Right. Um, crazy. So, and I didn't even see an elite boat all day. Right. I was doing my own thing was out of everyone's way. And, uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, today the guy told me it was the best day of fishing he's ever had. Hmm. I thought it was terrible. So, you know, Alex, where's your mustache? <laughs> it's gone. I was in a wedding this weekend and they told me no, no mustache allowed. Oh my. Yeah. But it'll so, be back. Give me a couple weeks. I'll, I'll get it back for you. He's hitting town. I'll be up there Wednesday late around 7 30 p.m. Thursday's going to blow like Donkey Kong, but I will find somewhere to go and fish. Um, I'm really thinking we're going to hit the 50 boat mark. I really am with all the phone calls I've gotten. I mean, a lot of phone calls, a lot of phone calls about signing up at the ramp. So that's a lot of money on the table. We're leaving. Joey's on back in the comments tonight because he was seemed like he was kind of on the fence. He's calling me up asking me how many boats we really had and what the payout was and just drive up there and fish Joe, you know? Yeah. You know, it's well, going to be a good time. Tom Nee, I think is going to drive out and fish by himself. Really? Yeah. When did he tell you that? Last week. He was like, I can't get my dad to commit, but I'll just fish by myself. No, plans have changed. Oh, is he coming with his dad? Well, he was. Plans have changed. Oh, hopefully everything's all right. Everything's all right, I mean. But plans have changed. I told him he needed to be there for the meet and greet the night before. You know, we I understand to that, but listen, you know. Things come up at home. All right. It is what it is. Alex, are you coming out? I am not. I'm unfortunately working this weekend, both days. So you guys have it again next year, and I'll be sure to fly up out there. Travis, with the weather conditions that we're going to be handed for Saturday and Sunday, do you think that 23 pounds will be a competitive bag? Yes. So do I. Mm-hmm. Predictions out there, 23 pounds is competitive. If it's going to blow, probably. Looks like the forecast says it's going to blow and rain. You know, Eric, I, look, if you look, though, Eric, because I'm, I've got this wind finder app. Yeah. App, hold on a second. Pull it up, man. It's coming out of the uh, wind finder plus. And if you look at Sunday, okay. It starts out with a north wind at about four miles an hour, and it doesn't get windy until about one o'clock. So I'm kind of liking how Sunday is shaping up. So would you say that you guys would have a higher or lower winning weight than the ABA on Saturday? No, it's a team a turn. Higher because it's a team. Okay. Mm-hmm. Plus, you guys know Travis is going to come in with them some stupid bag on Saturday anyway. Really? 
I doubt it, bro. You don't bro. know. You always say that, man. I doubt it. Nobody believes nobody believes you anymore. There's a couple problems. <laughs> One, okay. I haven't been able to experience uh, I haven't been able to fish any of my history. Okay. For this time of year. Right? Cuz I just got up here, bro. Been up here 4 or 5 days only now. Guide. Yeah. I put my people on fish. I can't go exploring, right? Right. And so so is this going to be one of those tournaments where you burn up all your good schools and then by the time we need those good schools, we ain't got yeah, nothing left? Pretty much. It'll and be like, well, I don't know. We caught 300 here in this marina over the last two weeks. I don't know why we're not getting bit because you um, fucking caught them all. <laughs> here's the problem. I'm not going to be able to look at my, my areas because of the wind. Right? I'm not going to be able to bounce around and go hit 10 spots in a day. Right? No. It's going to be tournament where you're going to have to like plow your way to a spot and then hope you can grind it out i know and i honestly eric don't know where to grind i do i know where i'll be offline i was there i was fortunate enough to get up there a couple weeks ago and i gotta tell you it was blowing pretty good and i still was able to uh put a pretty good bag together um you fish where you told me you fish in that wind yes all right well then i'll be all right it's not that hard you just gotta get there and get wet man just gotta beat JP there, and you'll be all right. Eric's gonna be down in the. Uh... Sounds like uh, if uh, there might be an opening on Travis's boat come Sunday. <laughs> hey, Eric, the best was this, right? We're, I was up there with Gino, and me Not and Gino interested. We just went for a day just to have fun or whatever. So we get up there, and I say to Gino, "I go, listen, we got about three hours in the morning. We got to go check out some new stuff while we, while we can still, you know, get around the lake or whatever. And then it's going to blow like hell. So in the first three hours, I went exploring and stuff and found some some new, some new areas or whatever. And it started blowing and we were making our way back and we were fishing this one spot. Right. And, and he go, I go, dude, it, it's hammering now. Right. I go look over there on that other side over there. It's hammering. Right. He's like, oh, it ain't that bad. I'm like, oh, OK, here, let me do this for you. So I just turned the boat so it faced to, to the west. <laughs> And the first two waves, dude, came right in the boat, and the water was up to the knee. You know, if you stood in the cockpit, it was up to your knees. Hmm. <laughs> Sounds like my kind of tournament. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! I think you oh. were getting water on your screen on that HDS unit. That's why it was doing that. So you think the the rain? Yeah. So when you're oh when yeah. You're going down the lake. The water drops are like a fingertip. So just from now on, put it in standby when you're moving around and stuff. Because yeah, I don't know about that because when I turned it on and I wasn't running, it started doing that. But was it raining? It was a little drizzle on the Yeah, line. so it's just like a fingerprint hitting the screen, you know. Kind of sucks. It's one of the downplays of that one. But what mm. you can do is just take your mount and then uh, adjust your mount so that the water running so fast down the screen and whatnot. All right. Mm-hmm. Huh. Anybody hmm. else when anybody else really just want to tap out with how much it costs to go fishing nowadays? Mm. The lake at my house you got on the weekends is a forty dollar boat ramp fee. So by the time you pay that Holy and all your shit gas you might be looking about a 100 bucks just to go fishing for the day yeah dude so me and gino went up there for one day and it was five bills i was going to go up just saturday because the conditions were so good and go you know to see where people were fishing and this that and the other thing and then i really had to sit down and think about it because nobody could go with me and i'm like man i'm gonna drive i'm gonna spend 500 dollars just to drive around i was like nah, i'm all set i'm not going mm-hmm Getting kind of crazy. It's starting to come down though. I think it was a four fifty a gallon here in New York now. Down yeah, they want you to think that that's normal. No, I know that's the worst part. It goes down to four. The worst part. No, the worst part is if you look at. I ain't gonna go there right now. I don't go there. there. There's free energy out there. Uh, there's been free energy way before the new world took over. Did you hear about that guy that they whacked because he came up with a car that ran off water? I've heard stories. Mm -hmm. Eric shakes his head. <laughs> hey, Eric, you know they used to run they used to run trains off steam, bud. So it is possible. It is possible. Eric, how come you don't call JP anymore? Man, uh, I've been on vacation, bud. 
<laughs> what have you been doing? Man, fishing the salt, bro. Like you getting it. Get, get, I you love getting it. You stick around your I get No, don't you? No. Okay, I don't like that brand. I'm You're not salt. into that. I'm not, I'm not a salt life guy. I don't live down there. I just enjoy it when I go, man. It's nice to do something different, you know? I'm a pier rat when I'm there and a bridge rat, man. So it doesn't cost me much. The bridges are free. So, you know, you just get a pack of plastics and some jig heads and you're fishing, which is kind of cool. <clears throat> the piers are like 15 bucks a day, but uh, got spooled by a tarpon almost as uh, tall as Travis. That was kind of cool. Man, on like a spinning rod, medium, medium action spinning rod, seven foot and a 4,000 Rio, man, took every inch of braid I had on a gotcha plug. It was cool, man. I hooked this fish up. It's on a pink gotcha too. Pink, white belly, black polka dots. With a little bass lab modification on the back. You guys want to see what I do? Freddie, you guys like throwing gotchas out there. You'll like this modification. And uh, sometimes I just like, it just gets bit. So here's what I do. So you guys see, can you see my screen? Look at the hook. I tie some tinsel on the back treble hook. That's a Carolina blue gotcha with a Spanish mackerel in the background. It's on my story. Anyway, <clears throat> so I'm plugging and, you know, you're you're jerking your rod in this this one ounce gotch is doing this through the water it looks like a wounded minnow and most of the time you're up high because you're on a bridge i mean up, up here so you're looking down into the water and if the east wind blows it's clear it blows warm water from the gulf stream because the gulf stream is only 45 miles offshore and all these crazy fish come in it's like houndies it's uh Ooh. it's tarpon a pacific i mean uh they're called hound hound fish they're long oh. skinny they're like toothy critters. There's freaking, it's crazy. It's crazy. So there were some tarpon in the area. So I'm plugging and I hook up and this thing, I like, it stops me cold. It pulls hard. Like my drag screams. And then it does this zigzag pattern, makes a boil the size of my truck hood, and then kind of does a mini jump. And I see the size of the fish and then takes off and peels like a hundred plus yards off my spool. And then I look down, I'm going, I got like three wraps left at this point, JP. So I grab my spool because it's do or die time. And this five foot tarpon goes whoa, 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 like eight foot out of the air, the silver king and just busts my line. I mean, he pulled my rod straight, man. It was epic, man. That's probably the hookup of a lifetime for me on light tackle. There was nothing I could do to stop him. It was like a freight train. But uh, what a what a great way to lose all your old braid. So I respooled, caught a cobia later that day. Uh, is my PB cobia is like the trash can of the ocean, man. But they follow these big giant rays around, and uh, you'll see a black ray the size of your truck hood, maybe a couple hundred pounds, and there might be six to eight cobia underneath eating crabs and shrimp as this ray like is floating along, stirring stuff up. They are on top of them, behind them, or underneath of them, and they appear out of nowhere. It's really really cool fishing, man. Plus Spanish mackerel, I think they're hitting your line when you when you when they their burst speeds like 35 miles an hour. So it's like this silver streak and it just like pulls your drag like crazy. So man, I love it, bro. Yeah, Cuda. I saw three kings come in in the in the first week I was there. That was really cool. Uh, they all ate uh, pin rig uh, live bluefish. That was really neat. Saw a shark go after a ribbon fish. The ribbon fish is like prehistoric as f. It's got this tooth. I, I I did a story thing. You got to see these things, man. They look chrome. They're like pure chrome. And um, he hooked up this ribbon fish. And I saw like an eight foot shark just make a beeline outside the lights at about nine o'clock at night straight for his ribbon fish and ate it. It was crazy looking. Let me see if I can find this ribbon fish. You got to see this thing. It hmm. is wild looking. Where is it at? Eric, did you do anything special for your reel in that situation? So I know I've heard there's like what the fuck? Some separate reels or something. No, why do. did you leave abruptly? You got so mad at the whole thing. Did he give you a, a real answer and he went into a saltwater life story. You don't just text me and say peace out. You're going to bed without saying what? goodbye to the whole family. What the hell's that no, all about? No, no, don't come back. Did you read my text at least? <laughs> yeah, you in? There's the uh, there's yeah. the ribbon fish head. Look at that thing, man. It's it's out of cape. Oh man. wow, is that crazy? It's like a dinosaur or something. It's it truly, is. man. It is freaky looking, and they're like super silver. It's it's a wild fish, man. So anyway, hmm. that's the story. You can see it live, like flipping around. Look look at hey that. Hey guys, thing, JP got to go to bed. Okay, <laughs> bye, JP. He that's does a... get up early. 
I'll give him that. Anyway, man, that's what I've been doing. Caught some salty bass. That was really cool, man. Was fishing water where there's flounder, speckled trout, and puppy drums swimming around, and, and bass mixed in with them. It's really wild. It's a cool fishery down there, man. It's very, very cool. So that's what I've been doing. Hanging out yeah. here. Bridges, piers, and boats. Yeah, doing that. And hanging with family, man. My family was down, lots of relatives. So I enjoyed it. I was down there four weeks, man. It's the longest I've ever been in the Outer Banks. Really, really loved it. Hmm. That's right. <clears throat> you know it. That's what I got. That's what I got for you guys. <laughs> Oh my god, this phone, dude. You gotta fucking put that thing on mute or something. It's very distracting. It's hard to do a show with these calls coming in. This is just an open topic, real quick, live to let you guys know. I think VIP is next week, Monday. And then we'll be um we'll see how August goes. Can you believe it's almost August? Almost no man, it's crazy. Time flies when you're having fun, bro. Yeah. Mm. Next thing you know, it's going to be winter, and we're going to be sitting here doing the Christmas auction, and the Christmas it's going to be the end of the year. <laughs> so, Travis, I know we talked about it earlier, but a while, a while ago before we got into all that, Brendan Andrews did want you to go in a little more in-depth about what you think the differences are between the old Live Scope and the new Live Scope Plus, at least from what you've noticed so far. Um. No, I guess there, there's really no interference, zero like lines running through or I, I never really had ghost tree, but sure, um, I can track my baits extremely well. I, I was tracking uh, my client's swim bait today a little bit, you know, I like I can even if he did a, a, a cast kind of out in a different direction. Um, I had a jerk bait fish on today that I saw him chasing um, balls of bait and I was able to see him just kind of hovering way out, you know, I mean, not way out, but 80 feet. But I, for some reason that just allows you to track your moving baits really well. And I can stay on my other baits, Ned rig or tube or whatever. Hey, that's really cool, Travis. But did you hear about my tarpon spooling me? I heard about that. <laughs> you showed zero interest in that, man. What's up? With you didn't ask me a question about because you already told me before the show. That's all. Oh, you could. Oh, I got you. And you I'm, you asked me no questions or said nothing of what I told you before either. So, I, FYI, it's it's all right. It's all right, dude. I know you have zero interest in what I was doing for four weeks. It's I, all good. I figured it's, on Thursday it's, we could catch it's, up, bro. It's it's all good. It's all good, man. I I see you're low. The energy's low. The you're energy's you're low. the man. You're like zombied a little bit, bro. I don't know if it was the uh, time flied and you were in this uh, time warp again that sucked your brain dry. I don't know what's going on. What's happening to you, man? You said you give up. Uh -huh. Something's going on. We need to address the elephant in the room because people are talking about it. I mean, in the comments, whether right. you want to or not, it's it's OK. That's fine. Just say later. You don't want to. But, man, you're you're coming in with zero mojo right now. No <laughs> energy. There's just no vibe here, man. I mean, I got to do something to spice this thing up, bro. This is okay. terrible. I, I'll one. call it out. <laughs> Go I, ahead. Love new, I love your new Costa hat, Eric. All right, cool. That's good. That's okay. a good start. Second of all, <laughs> we're fine. If if you if and I just want to know if you want to sit Thursday out and take your time coming up here, you're more than welcome to. Okay, got it. Got I'll it. I'll be out got there. No, um, I know. I'm going to be focusing on some uh, closer to reach areas the rest four. of the week. Ten four. Um, I made an extremely long run on. Friday to get away from the elite series guys. Yeah. When I say long run, I was, I was an hour into my drive before I sh shut the motor off. Wow. That's a long run. Away. Longest I ever ventured out there. And lo and behold, guess who shows up an elite series angler. Oh my God. <laughs> That's so, so I'm crazy. fishing a piece of structure, right? There's not a fish on the damn thing. <laughs> but I'm like, all right, 
I'll just go idle over here. So I, I'm 100 yards away from that piece of structure. I see a boat coming at me. And all of a sudden it looks wrapped. I'm like, oh, okay, maybe that's somebody, you know, I'm like, uh. um, I take off to another spot. And as soon as, well, I walk, I, I idle a little bit. He was only there for five, you know, he puts, puts his electronics in the water and realizes there's nothing there. So I go to another spot and he probably sees me heading to another spot and he's like, shit. So he comes right up behind me and I kind of saw a boat come in and I knew something was up. So I didn't start fishing nor stop exactly on the spot. I kind of did a loop. And as I was coming around, I, I looked and noticed that it was a rat boat. So I basically went like this to him. Okay. Tell him, come in, come in. I went out, shut the motor off, and said something like, hey, I didn't know, you know, you would, you know, you guys would come out this far or whatever. I didn't expect to see anybody out here. Right. Um, I'll get out of your way. And and uh, and he said, right thank you. Do. Yeah, right thing and to I do. Left. And I almost wanted to say, because I know it might have been in his mind in killing him, that I probably jacked a bunch of fish on that first spot. You might have, you just want to say, like, I didn't catch anything. I, I wanted to say that, but I didn't know if that was like, if that would make him feel uncomfortable with information. So I just left, you know. But I wanted to yell, yo, by the way, that other spot you saw me, or I didn't catch shit either. Because that was his starting spot, obviously. Right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, he probably did think you went over there and jacked him once he went over there and realized there's no more fish there. I know. But this fuck. Dude, I, and I was so far away from anything. That's crazy, man. It was foreign to me, dude. Wolf Island. No, I know it's not Wolf Wait, Island. Just, man, it, 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 the lost city of Atlantis. It Basically, I, I even though I was doing 35, I was worried that I would have enough fuel to get back. Wow. That's a long run. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable, man. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Cray cray. <laughs> We did have a lot of questions come in for you, Travis. And Eric, I'd like to get your opinion on this as well. The people are wanting to know, Travis, your opinion on the new opens format where you have to fish all nine in order to qualify for the Elite Series. You can't just fish mm -hmm. one section anymore and then get in. You have to fish all nine of them. And they take the top whatever out of all those nine. You got an opinion sure. on that? I know a lot of people are saying they're wow. making it a lot harder to do. Hell yeah, so man. That's like really it. tough. How many people I, have I the money it, to fish nine opens, man? Not many. I think it makes sense because if you don't have the money to fish the nine opens, you're not going to have the money to fish the elites. You know, you right. Know. And I've heard that argument too. You know, people saying, you know, that's you're going to be fishing nine, you know, eight or nine tournaments on the elite series traveling around like that. It prepares you for what's to come next and it makes you, you know, a little more seasoned. And that way, once you get there having to fish, you know, nine tournaments, you're not as green as you would be had you just fished three tournaments within four hours of your house and had three good finishes which is obviously not easy to do in the opens but certainly harder to do over a nine event schedule yeah yeah i mean it's all about the money now man if they thought it was hard before to fish your area in opens and make it nine is like what's that financial commitment for nine opens not only that and time I and mean, especially who knows like we're talking about earlier with the gas prices. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm just the the money, time off from work. I mean, nine weeks. I mean, it's a it's almost a week commitment to fish an open, right? With your how That's many right. days of official practice? Three. Yeah. yeah I don't know I mean, if they'll change that too, but I believe right now you can like Travis said, a couple people were doing it last year for the Ontario one. They were just up there for a month fishing around. There's no wow. cutoff or anything. Oh wow, that's crazy. Wow. So unlimited practice. That's so crazy. I guess if you got the funds, you could do it. I mean, yeah. that that makes it uh, even more of an elite sport. and Or should we say elitist? Mm -hmm. It's sure. not for your common man. If it wasn't expensive enough already, shit. <laughs> I mean, right? Yeah. I wonder how that's going to affect participation in the Opens. How, what what body what percentage of the guys at the open are there trying to qualify for the elites? What would anybody guess? Out of the people fishing opens, who's there with an eye to make it to the elites? That's 
a good question. I mean, so let's say for easy math, we can say, you know, there's 200 people fishing yep. in the open. And I asked the chat, I don't think anyone knew definitively, but there also was the, if you fish all three of a division and you win one, then you get in the classic. And I know some people like Pete from Basu, that's the only reason he fishes. I mean, he just wants to win one. He's not worried about points and just get back to the classic. So I'm sure there's a couple right. of people doing that. Okay, Some there you people go. Trying to qualify for the elites, it could be you know a guide or locals wanting to step out and do a higher level of competition on their home body of water, see what they can sure. do. Obviously, if you're a guide, you fish their life, you feel like you have a, a good chance to win. Try you know, whatever yep. it is, fifty grand for the open. So I'm sure there's. If I had to guess, I bet. Yeah, I think MJ said it in the chat. About half the field's probably fishing for the elites. Then you got the other twenty five percent for the classic. The other twenty five is just cherry pick and trying to. Win one. See what they can do, yeah. Sure, get that trophy and that check. Wow, interesting. Yeah, the classic, I mean, for anybody that bass fishes, you know, probably had a dream to, like, make oh, it to yeah. the class. If you're a serious competitive bass fisherman, saying you made it to a Bassmaster Classic and having a shot at that title is pretty cool, right? So, mm -hmm. You want to know a cool story? Tell Here. me. So the other night, I was outside I'm at my boat rigging up. And uh, some guy starts approaching me. And I'm like, oh, man, I really just want to rig up. You know what I mean? Just let me rig up, bro. I don't want to answer questions. And so, uh, and that's just what I'm thinking. You know, you got you had to be in my mind frame. Yeah, I get it. We've all been there. You're tired. It's the end of the day. And you're just trying yeah, to rig yeah. up and somebody wants to come over and talk. I think we've all been there. Okay. So that ain't easy. That's nobody's going to hate you on that one, man. I mean, yeah, we've yeah. all been there. You're okay. tired as F and you're trying to rig up. So he goes, man, I love your, your Camus. I love the colors. Hmm. I go, well, thank you. You know, and then we started talking. I said, yeah, I love it. Blah, blah, blah. And I asked, then I, then I actually asked him a question. What kind of camas do you have? How fast does it go? Blah, blah, blah. So we started engaging in a conversation and my mood changed. It felt good. This is a good old boy from Missouri, right? Looked a little backwards, kind of. And I'm thinking. But when he was walking towards me, I'm like, what's this bubble want, right? So we're talking. He's talking. Now we're 20 minutes deep, bro. And conversation's flowing. We're having fun. We're laughing. We're talking. And uh, he goes, what's your name? I said, my name. He goes, nice to meet you. I'm Gidu uh, Hibden. Hibden. I'm like, oh. Guido? Yeah. Guido or Dion? Guido. You, if it's Guido, I think you saw a ghost. Didn't Guido no, no, pass no. away? No, Guido's still alive. That's the son. Guido's the son? I think so. No, I think Dion is the son. I think you got it flipped. No. Let's hear from the let's hear from the people that are watching the stream that really know bass fishing and bass fishermen. All right. Anyway, so I was like, oh shit, bro. I know who you are. I I thought I recognized you. I felt right. like an idiot, but uh yeah, Dion is Guido's son. Guido passed away. Anyway, you're you're seeing it. You'll see it. It'll keep going. But anyway, Dion, you're talking to Dion Hibden. Sorry. That's okay. You're talking to Dion. Keep going. I'm just saying it's really cool freaking dude. And oh like, like I like he didn't try to like you know he wasn't bragging about who he was, nothing. We we're just having a kick ass conversation. And uh guy was a cool dude, is all I'm trying to say. That's cool. Yeah, and I like that's him. a cool story. I like yeah. it. All right, you just trying to rig up now. <laughs> <laughs> what are you rigging up? Yeah. For, to, for, to, for, for tomorrow. <laughs> I got to retie. We had uh, we had some casualties today. So, oh, I'm sure. So I'm three days in the guidance with two broken rods. Oh, my God. No, <laughs> Come on, Travis. Seriously? Yeah, bro. Oh, when you say casualty, it's not going to be you got two dock skipping rods for the season. <laughs> <laughs> I like how. Remember you were tying that one knot and your tip broke and then we like we we popped the guide off and it fit all oh, yeah. we sanded it down and it became like the perfect dock skipping rod. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Somebody asked what knot you tied, and I said it's cer it's certainly not the FG or is the FT as I call it. 
uh, check, check Travis's Instagram profile for my rant on that. Um, I had, I had a high schooler yesterday in my boat. Tied the and knot, tied in the FG knot pretty damn quick. I'm not saying it can't be done quick. I just, when people go, yeah, you got to check the top because it frays a little bit and the whole thing will slip out. I'm like, not doing it. Mm-mm, not doing it. Yeah. So I think the main thing that's the negative of it is there's just so many other ones that work just as good and they're half as easy to tie. That's why no one wants to switch over. There's no doubt it's good. It's just. So, how, yeah. what do you tie, Eric? That I, the same thing that I've tied the whole time. I make a loop with, you know, Tell the main line. Right now. Okay. So I make a loop with the fluorocarbon. I shoot the braid through. I wrap it around 11 to 12 times. And then I pinch it where I stop. And then I wrap it up seven times and I shoot the braid back through where it came through. That's oh, what I do. The top hole, the top loop. I, I shoot it back through the same place that the braid is is that you, you follow me that it entered mm-hmm. i think and that's called it's either the crazy alberto i think it's a crazy alberto people are typing it in now which i love and it's slim and if you're careful this makes it thinner and i know it's really hard to do with light line but if you take your time wrapping down 12 and you wrap seven in between the gaps where you came down the line it makes it uber, uber clean and uber skinny, especially with light braid. I mean, everybody's like, I, and I know, look, the FG knot is thinner. I get it. I get it. But I don't want to be tying two overhand hif- hitches or half hitches or whatever it is and having to watch that thing during the day. You know, because it goes through the guides, that, oh, that, that half hitch, I just don't know how it can stay. So, and for me, I couldn't perfect it. I tried videos. I tried watching. I've got the tool. I've got the damn tool. I bought the fucking tool. But I'm not taking a tool out there. I'm going to tie that thing and I can tie it in the wind. I don't need to like have any tension on it. And I know there's tricks where like you could do it without tension, but like Travis is doing the lizard tongue move. I mean, it works for me. <laughs> and, and, and I, for, for me, I have it broken off at my knot where I break off is if I'm snagged, it's breaking off at the leader uh, or a portion of the leaders breaking off because it's frayed. I have you ever with your crazy Alberto? Cause I know that's what you tie Travis. Have you ever, broken off all the time your bra- braid to fluoro yeah at the fluoro well now the braid to fluoro. It, wow like all the goal, time. That's crazy that it- maybe i'll do it better this time i always go in two two circle two reps i go back the braid through the second loop down i gotcha <sighs> Hey, at Bojud, I don't care if it's not a half inch. <laughs> I don't tie it. So don't listen to me for advice on the FT knot. Because I don't call it the FG. I call it the fuck that knot. FT. FT. I said it. <laughs> so go to Bud for advice. I have zero to give you on the FG. I can't tie it. I tried. I suck. That's all I'm going to say. Huh. <laughs> Use the risotto finish on the FG. Bass Rutten, man, I appreciate you guys telling me. I've got a lot of advice on it. I just tied it. How do you finish it? Which part? The FG? No, yours. You don't. You just clip the two tag ends. That's what I figured. That's it. (laughs) That's all, man. Clip it. Clip it. You want to nick the braid? Because that's something I've seen people do. I've done it. So when you're when you're clipping a tag on any knot, obviously, and you're tying it, whether it's the FG or otherwise, you know, if you nick the braid, you're done, right? Somebody's got to make scissors because those scissors right there, while they're good, there's those little jagged edges and they're made for clipping braid. I found these uh, clippers that I have, especially for the fluorocarbon, and they're like they're not they're like a, a pair of nail clippers, but they're curved. I used them in the saltwater. I found I got a much cleaner clip right up against because you know you don't want that little bit of that tit holding out anyway somebody come up with a better pair of scissors true there you go put a risotto on it we need scissors when you have your front teeth like travis that's the best pair true of scissors that, in the man. world right there you know that's right absolutely hey um kuda scissors are the best cut okay gotcha jamie 
What do you got? What do you got, Travis? Jamie, Jamie's saying the CUDA, not 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 like Barracuda, not like CUDA CUDA, but CUDA scissors. Oh, is it yeah. the ones with the little blue? It's got yeah. a blue handle and they're tiny. Is that yeah, the one? I like those. Yeah, I have a yeah, pair of those. Are, they're legit and they're cheap. This Curly is, Q uh, says uh, this fly tie scissors. Overpriced scissors that works really good for about a month and a half. Okay. Yeah. I did a video on it once telling everybody about them. Yeah, Bo, I mean, that's good advice. Tie the FG like when you're in a very nice uh, controlled environment and you're, you know, your patient. Uh, I tried that not during a tournament. I just tried to do it down in the salt water and I couldn't do it. I had three <laughs> guys. I, I don't want to get spun up again because this is the same story I told when I did get spun up it was Jack Rankers. Some dude that had young eyes were watching a YouTube video, the best YouTube video ever made on it. And, and mine looked like, I don't even want to say. It was just the craziest thing I've ever seen. We were laughing our asses off. And we weren't drinking, by the way. Hmm. Fiskers. And the you tiny pair of Fiskers were. Huh? Nothing. Oh, dude, that was like the fourth time I've tried it. I did it at home, in my garage, on my phone, in a boat with other dudes, down at the beach. I mean, that's just, it's, it's bordering on ridiculous. I, maybe my brain's just fucked up. I Is it? <laughs> Are their hands reversed when I'm watching them? I can't do that in my mind. I don't know. I don't know. Alex, could you tie it? Have you tied it? I, you, I did it. I can why don't you? <laughs> I, I want to see you. Like right now, get a rod and a reel. I want you to watch a video, tie one live, and then show us real close how it does. I could go grab some. I can tell you already how it would go, though. I can do the first part, but yeah. I come to the same issue you do with Whatever half hitch, what I know, Bo just no, Bo, Bo, do don't it. say half hitch, he'll get mad at you. But whatever that one is, that's it'll tie, and then eventually, if you pull on it hard enough, it just slips. So I just went back to the same one you guys do. I know, man. I don't break it, and yeah, Bo says FG sucks broke, to tie on it. small uh, diameter braid, right? And that's kind that of what sense. we're doing. Make a loop and wrap it inside three times, Jay Roberts. See. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So much advice out there. So many videos out there. How can it be that hard? Anyway, I'm not trying to say you guys against it. I'm just going to tie what I tie. <laughs> All the matter. But I do have that tool. Has anybody? Does anybody have the tool? Where's the tool? I added. I didn't out even know they had one, Eric. What's it supposed to do? Dude, they got they got a tool. It ties it for you, apparently. Not really, but <laughs> I think I. Yeah, here it is. <laughs> there it is. The not assist 2.0. And uh yeah, look. Oh, and the instructions God. are in Japanese. How's oh. that gonna work out for me? But it has it has pictures, and I'm sure I can go online and see somebody. It's the Namigata plus switch style, offset arm style, compact folding style, and this is the 2.0. Oh, sorry, made for the FG. Uh they probably have a 3.0. Does anybody have this? And are you are you weak if you use it? If you're caught using this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Je Jeff Riddle goes, a tool, a fucking tool. I guess that makes me a fucking tool <laughs> uh, for, for buying this tool. I, it's in the package. I haven't used it, which makes me even more of a tool. <laughs> That's right. So go have fun, everybody. Let's talk. <laughs> Joe Zombeck just asked, what's your... Uh... Payback for the derbs I wrote. I keep 90%. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Tim, Tim Maynard says, I can translate the Japanese on the back with my phone. Well, uh, we just might have to put that go. in production. I might just bring that up to New York, and we'll use that that night before the tournament and lose like five, six pounders in a row. <laughs> That'd be a good five, six-minute video on how the heck to use this thing. I should probably bust this out as a laugh during a stream. With the pressure on. And Save see, it for the auction when it's like. And see, no, I don't want to auction it off. If, 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 if it works, I mean, has anybody used it? I have. I wasn't watching when I asked that question. So, anyway. I'm going to catch these fish. Bro. Hey, did I show you guys the new Goonie Wolf art? Yeah, now nah, let's see it. What What's the last one you remember, Alex? Oh, geez. Off the top this of my is, head, it's rising. Or, no, it's. She, it's the one where she, it's like orange. This is I have it. not seen it, that one yet. That's a good can one. Can you see it? She thick. Yeah. Come on, man. I think I'm gonna do like a. What is it? I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. I want to do some <laughs> awards from the Bassa. She thick, baby. <laughs> thick. 
Yeah, she thick. It's not even on the website, so I can't believe I showed. I it, thought I your guy it. was. Too It'll busy. be available tomorrow. He no, designed something for me, and now he's just pumping out stickers for the Bass Lab. Like, well, you know, man. And then I. No, I don't, I don't know. know. I I'm asking a question. I don't know if I showed this, but I got a June bug spinner bait up. I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna put some of these up. This is a river rat spinner bait short arm, and it's one of the best I think I've ever seen. I always wanted to bring one back. Hidden weight. It's I'll show you the features of this one. I think I got some up on the site. I don't know. I got to check the inventory, but because they sold out, but I got some more stock. So let me go over it. It's a hidden weight design. Mm, yep. Great. So really small frame. It's got a haywire twist is what I'm calling a haywire twist. Well, that keeps your spinner bait together. It's really hard to bend this out and it gives it a more positive hook set. And then this turtle back blade, which I like the hammer blade, throws a lot more flash. Very compact and light wire. I made it for river fishing. So what do you guys think? Jamie, I'd like to get some river red hats made, man. I got I got a lot of stuff to do, man. I, I've been kind of like remiss in putting stuff on the site and bringing some things together. But that would be cool. There you go. There you go. She thick, baby. She thick, Travis. I think we should have a she thick award. <laughs> she thick, baby. <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't call it Big Bass, Travis. Call it the She Thick Award. She Thick tournament. Award. She Thick. Yeah, they get a sticker. They get a sticker. A sticker. <laughs> so what else, man? Alex, when's your next derby, bro? I'm going to see. So this weekend, depending on what time I get off work, I might try and hop in a night tournament. And then that'll get over at like 3 a.m., and then just go back to work again the next morning off of an hour or two of sleep. So I might try that depending on what time I get off work. If not, it'll either it's like the second or third week of August, which will probably suck fishing, but got to fish when you can. Yeah, man, that's I'm, right. You know it, man. That's dog days of summer. What's everybody's yeah. best technique for the dog days of summer? Like if you're if you're in August, it's hot, it's slicked off, there's no wind, and you're looking for a bite. What are you going to stick in your hand? Go ahead. I want to. I want to hear my everybody. car keys in my hand. Back the trailer <laughs> and go home. <laughs> I hear you, brother. Man, it gets tough, Ryan. I, I think we've all been there. It's, Damn, it's doesn't get much better around here. Yep. Let's see. Spy bait. <laughs> Fishing the southeast. That's awesome. Wacky Sen Senko under docks. I mean, honestly, you can't go wrong with a wacky Senko, right? Does are you going to stop working? Are you, are you, no, it doesn't. Are you going four inch or five inch on the Senko? Ooh, fish in the southeast, 12 inch worm on a shaky head in deep water. All right. Quarter ounce popper. Nico worm with sauce. Mm -hmm. I like the Nico. Nico's a good call. I'm surprised nobody said Ned. 10 inch power worm going big for summertime. All right. God. <laughs> Clint is like Senko only for desperate times. Four inch for smallies, five inch for largies. Okay. Weightless Senko, sure. Texas or wacky JP. Weightless fluke. That's different. Jamie with the drop shot or finesse worm. We did a little show on the finesse worm, didn't we, Travis? The trick worm and finesse worm. All the ways you could fish, like I think the Zoom Trick Worm and Zoom Finesse Worm are probably two of the most versatile worms out there, right? Because you could do so much with those things. I mean, right? You get 20 Finesse Worms in a pack. But I'm going to throw a little something different at you guys. And I don't know how many people fish it. It's a Zoom product. Who can guess it? It's skinnier than the Trick Worm. I but know. it's a fish catching machine. What am I talking about? Let's see who really knows. You could drop shot it because I have. I've, I've waited wacky. I've waitlist wacky. I've waitlist Texas it. Uh, you could fish it Nico. You could fish it wacky uh, drop shot. Um, you can Carolina rig it. You could split shot it. Oh, fish in the southeast. You got it. That's the one I was talking about. Everybody had great guesses for sure. Ryan, you're you're right there, man. I got to tell you, down south, there's some Carolina boys that won't fish without a swamp crawler, but you don't see many people throwing it anymore, man. I had probably one of the best days in the Potomac River post-spawn 
throwing a swamp crawler Texas rig with a J bend hook with Richard Waiter in the spoils in the I color stupid. It, wait a minute, it wasn't green pumpkin. What what was the color? It's one of my favorites. Clear water. Clear water. We're still talking about the Zoom swamp crawler. What was the color? I don't know if anybody knows this color. I can't wait for somebody to guess this color. For all you Swamp Crawler fans out there, it wasn't Green Pumpkin. And not saying you shouldn't just buy Green Pumpkin, because that's like the... Ah, close, Mark D. JP, not motor oil. Yeah, Tim, you're right. Blue Glimmer, no, Jamie. I might have to go get a pack. Let me go get a pack. I'll be right back. Let's do it. Hold on. Let me put something in front of the screen so that the camera won't flicker. <laughs> <laughs> Does it work? That, Does it work? You're proud of that it's, non-voter award. Yeah, sure. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a team award, motherfucker. <laughs> When's the last time you won a team championship? Never. So, Travis, you guiding all week leading up to the tournament? You got a day off or two to practice. Yeah, Eric's coming up Thursday. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm guessing you're hopping in that ABA then, too? Yep. Heck, yeah. I'm in. I'm telling you right now, bro, this it ain't going to turn out well. I'm not sandbagging. I'm, not, I'm telling you straight up. I believe you. I know what I'm up against. I don't do you think, though, my, that... I don't fool myself. No, I think what I'm going to do is try to fish history. And I'm going to get burned. So, since you think that ahead of time, what's your backup plan going <laughs> into it? If it's 12 o'clock, the history's not working, and you just got 15 pounds in the live well. Do what Eric said <laughs> and go to my spots I've been guiding... And catch you and just blind cast. Gotcha. I mean, you never, I guess you never know what can happen up there, but there's uh, in the way answering. I think because let's think about okay. this. There's hints I'm giving you. Would I normally have a problem with windy, cloudy days? Not really. Right. So why do I this year? Why would I right now? I'm just I'm giving you a little See clue. what you're saying, yeah. You would me? you say that? I've heard this, I think, on a couple of your podcasts and some other ones as well, that the Great Lakes are, you know, generally fishing history is not the best idea, but the Great Lakes, you can get away with it there just because, you know, that boulder out and. 20 feet of water and it's not going anywhere. The fish know it's there. They use it every year. The five pounders have been using it for the past 15 years of their life. Do you think that's why you can get away with it a little more up there? Yeah, I, I, I will agree with that statement. All right. Uh, I, 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 what we got, Eric? I, I couldn't dig it up, man. I think I got it with my sure. truck and I'm not that going out there. It's the, my... it's, the, it's, the, it's the natural pro blue. Oh shoot, guys! I got. I want to bring this up. I'll bring it up next week for the VIP members. Yeah, where's um, the special run on Senkos, man? I gave everybody their refund back. What, dude? I was working with a company. I'm not going to bash him, oh, but the dude I was working me. with strung me along for months. Damn. You know, I mean, you and you can't go to the new Yamamoto the folks. Hey, I'm going to get you a, an answer by this date. Hey, the boss is busy. Hey, the boss had a fire. Whatever. You know what I mean? Excuses. I went to done business that way. Dang, man. Sure. So I so finally I sent him an email and didn't hear back from him. And one night I'm like, you know what? These guys, it's almost August. Uh, you know, they probably forgot they even ordered it. Let's give them a little, you know. Let's give them their money back and maybe they can buy a tank of gas with it or something. So, so Travis, I'll what I'm hearing I'll is it sounds like, and I'm sure you thought of this, so I apologize if I'm bringing it up again, but I mean, 
should we call in Jimmy Big Time Bates and see if he can do a big old order of <laughs> he X, sold all his stuff, special stuff. Yeah, Jimmy's oh, back to garden. He sold all his stuff, bro. Damn. I know. He's back in the race car driving. Is he? I don't know. It's Jimmy. Wait, wait think... six months and then to something else. Oh, man. <laughs> he should come back on the show. You got to call him. I I... People, the people ask for him all the time. I know. I know. He's Jimmy Big Time. We'll bring him back. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up a crankbait. And I'm gonna see if anybody can name it. Eric, thing. I really I, I have a question I want to ask you. That who, who has ever seen that crankbait? Who made it, and what's it called? Lee Sis and the Banana. <laughs> That's a good one. No, but no. <laughs> I do like how quick he came up with that, though. Kind of is banana -y shape. I'll show it again. You got to be a crankbait nut to know that one. Domestic, domestic balsa, not Japanese. Not saying it's a fish catcher, but because I've never thrown it. <laughs> no, I've oh, only got four. Oh, I would never throw it. Ooh. Nope. Why wouldn't you nope. throw it? Nope. Nope, Bo, not a thin man, not an ugly duck, not an AZZ, not a little speedy. Nope. Not a, not a jaw jacker. But you guys, those are good guesses, though. I'll show you another bait. M made by the same manufacturer. Hmm. What was that bait? I don't know. Travis Waller. Big, big money. Ahead, not, not an Edders. Fish of the Southeast. No clue. <laughs> MJ, I'm convinced crankbaits have never caught a fish. <laughs> That's right, MJ. Don't even bother Tim, throwing on there. They're Tim, no you're, you're, Tim, you're my crankbait nut. Come on. Not, curly Q, not a pose. It's not a Zoom. It's not a catching concepts. These are all great guesses, man. Travis, do you throw the Carolina rig at a thousand islands at all? No. Only if he's making a video. PH custom. No, <laughs> Rob C. <laughs> I'll answer the question for you. I don't care. He's rigging up. I, mean, I know a little bit about Travis's habits. And the answer is absolutely not. Because <laughs> he doesn't need to. Who wants to throw the ball and chain when you can catch him the way he does? And he catches the shit out of him. It's not a bomber. Black label, no. Zoom, no. It's not a gulp. Good good guess, though. I'll show you a gulp. This is a good box right here. <laughs> oh, I got the gulp in stock. Bingo. That's a gulp. Not a wiggle wart. Negatory. Oh, my God. It's fun, fun, right? Guess that. Oh, nope. Jamie, you're digging out some. That's an old school, man. Got some <laughs> money makers in stock. Striking wing ding. Erickson. Bagley, no. <laughs> Haley, no. Stickman, is it? Close. But it wasn't a stickman. Andrew Feed. Yeah, man. He's done his research. He listens to my stuff. I know Andrew. 84, I have not tried the hairy dice. But it's not a stick man. Stick, stick, stick man does reproduce this manufacturer's bait. So you, you got part of it, but you didn't get the other part. Yeah, Jamie, I got some money makers, bro. Come on, man. Extreme. I'm a crank bait nut. It's not a blackjack. I don't think I've ever seen anybody but stick man that he might have reproduced it. Um, I, I didn't see it on his site when he had him up, but he's known for the BPR. What does a BPR stand for? PH, nope. Shimano, nope. Not a Tennessee killer, but I think I got one of those in stock in this box. Let's see. It's a good little box, man. Okay, 
six ten. What? No, it's not a Duval. Look, there's some crankbait fools on this stream, man. Yeah. Straight up. Nope, not a small fry. Let's see. He's the nuts. Oh, not Buck Creek, man. Good night, man. You guys are going deep. Jamie Newton. Let's see. Jamie Newton. Yeah, Jamie. That's the color. Natural blue, blue bro. When it's clear water, that's the juice. Norman, nope. That's Jensen. good stuff, man. It's lure not a Jensen. Jensen. Not a lure Jensen. Nope. Nope. What? It's Nathan a Randy. Says, is Curly it a Q. You're... <laughs> Curly Q is funny, too. She goes, it is a Randy Blockett, and it's 10 bucks. Why, yes, Curly Q is correct. Curly Q is a guy. Okay, Curly Q is a guy. All right, Curly Q, you're a guy, and you're correct. <laughs> That's a stick man bait, and that's a baby. It's a BPR, baby pig reproduction. And by the way, for by those way, who don't know, he made that. some of these. He made some of these out of foam. How about that? You know, some guys make baits out of foam. I thought that was a brilliant use of material. Do we have any ladies on the stream right now? Piccolo, no. Norm C, no. Carolina Killer, no. Jackal, not a pot Is belly. Girls that watch this on a regular basis. Not a mimic either, Tim. It's handmade, yes. Well, I mean, did he make it on a CNC? Don't know. I have so many questions. It's yeah, Tim, you're right. It's like All a sudden, but it's not. And yet, um, pot belly, my man from pot belly, Bob Allen made some pot belly style baits. Let's see if I got a few of his pot belly style baits. Where's he at? Bob Allen, here's the real pot belly. <laughs> He made some pot bellies back in the day. Bass and Burger, we didn't really discuss Gary. Congratulations to Gary for winning the, I don't know, what's that tour called? The NPSL. A, NPSL. A, yeah, how about Gary? He used to be on your team, didn't he? Yeah. I got you. Congrats, Gary. This is a Bob Allen pot, pot belly style bait. Look how thin that bait is in the tail section. That's a very early bottle, man. Does anybody know what that lip material is? Anybody know? If you know, you're a crankbait nut. Here's another Bridget, one. Bridget's the only girl on here. He caught his oh. biggest bass ever on that bait right there at Falls Lake. He brought his box out, and he was really winding his carving down. And I said, I'd love to see some of your earlier baits. And so he said, you'd be interested in that? I said, Bob, are you kidding me? Look how, look at the shape of that bait, man. Isn't that crazy? There is no other balsa bait made like that. Look how thin and long the back section is. What does it do to the action? Why Can would you, you design something that like Thursday, that? Thursday, and that's all you're going to throw. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Matt. Pain grab. Anyway, man, I thought I'd do a, a few crazy, oh. you know, just something to spice up the show. I I'm hope sure. you guys enjoyed the crankbait show. No, no, I guess I'm on my live show, bro. Yeah, Matt, what are you doing? It's Monday night, man. Don't you even watch his freaking Matt? Don't you look at his Instagram? Holy uh, crap! Well, I, I'll be off soon. I'll call you later. Just bring him on. He's busy. What's he doing? I don't know. Something about something about something. Okay. Everybody's at ICAST. They're all partying yeah. down in Florida this week. Well, that's what he just said. He's like, I'm on a beach drinking. <laughs> I thought I'd call. <laughs> I'm on a beach drinking thinking about you, Travis. <laughs> I mean, Travis would be the first person I'd call if I was drinking at a fishing convention. Uh, oh, Tim Evans, the old Asher Bates out of East Tennessee look like that. I'm guessing they're East Tennessee. Wide wobble on that, I believe so. Yes, yes. I, I fished some pot belly baits from Bob Allen, and um, he made a couple special for me back in the day. I made some requests, and I, I every time I throw them, I catch fish. They're amazing fish catchers. This is a big box for, for Bob Allen, but I'll show you the bait that I'm talking about. Got a unique action, a little bit of a deep diver. A deep diver. He keeps going off. And it's got that, it's got that uh, pot belly style. Yes, it's mine. I guess so.
Let me see if I can get one that's not tangled, and I'll show you. In the old hot mustard color. Mustard. It's called a sugar bean. Holy crap. Come on. There we go. There we go. That's a little tidal water fish catching machine. Mm. But the pot, he was known for his pot belly. That's that was that's why he called his bait company Pot Belly Baits. So now you know. Anyway, something about it, man. And he had that nice little, with, um, nice little ticker in it. Tim Maynard, I will check my IG. If I cast this week, Travis, you got can you give us any sneak peeks on any companies you work with? Got anything cool coming out? Any new products? Yeah, good question. Hitting the market? Not that I'm aware of. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. <laughs> I haven't been following, to be honest with you. Gotcha. You know? mm -hmm. I'll get into it. For sure. Oh, yeah, man. Jamie Newton's got some, some pot bellies. Oh, yeah. Hey, you guys, I was thinking about putting together like a Lucky Craft, OG Lucky Craft, made in Japan. Um takeover box like one of my bass lab boxes is anybody interested yeah let me let me know cool. yeah i mean the the professor packs have like been pretty popular i think people get you know some really professor. rare baits that's what i call them man so I came up with that concept. Packs. it's the bass lab man it they fits have right for that now Dude, you clearly don't know anything about your co-host because you clearly haven't looked at my site. You clearly haven't watched when I actually held them up <laughs> and called them that. I got a box. You gave me a box. What the hell? You don't need a box. You don't fish crankbaits, bro. Sure I do. He needs Come something on, for man. the auction this winter, Eric. Jeez. Someone's got to <laughs> pony up the stock. Uh, All right. Hold on. I just see caught, what I put together. What would you catch? I caught... I caught um, I caught a bunch of smallmouth on a spro. Uh, Which one? That big deep diving thing. <laughs> I can't help you there, man. The spro little John? The big one. Dives a 20? Yeah. Yeah, the spro yeah, little it's John. A, it's a little, it's a flat side, whatever it is. I, you yeah. know, I don't deep crank much, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I know the bait. I, I caught uh, probably 10 of them on it. Hey, John Mango caught some big fish on the June bug, the, yeah. the, the, the Bass Lab June bug with uh, Oliver wow. Nye. He did. Swear to God, dude. Really? He said that, and Oliver was like, what the hell color is that? And he goes, <laughs> June bug. Watch it on the, watch it on the footage. DD70, <laughs> Curly Q knows what's up. Yeah, 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 yeah. E-step. Boom. Bo Judd going, it's not an E-step crankbait, but yeah. This is a Mikey step right here, man. Roland Martin won more money on this bait than any bait he's ever thrown. This is probably one of the, this is not the OG, but. And he lost it. I think his tackle box was stolen, but that's a Mikey step. They're biggie E, biggie E, Mikey step. I like that one. one. I like that. And that one's signed okay. by Mikey. Mikey step you talk about okay. rare yeah mike's no longer i don't think mike's alive anymore but uh i was uh and he numbered his crankbaits too 157 how about that he didn't sign many um but he supposedly trained under fred young who was responsible for fred young alex come on man you gotta know no clue the big o bro Ah. I knew we were going to have some type of quiz tonight, Eric. Yeah. I, I got to do something. People. I got to do something to spice it up, man. You're flat. You're flat as a pancake. You're flat as a soda. I'm back now. I'm, re I'm regenerized. Uh, regenerized, not a word. But listen, um, <laughs> I got family night tonight. I thought I'd try to give my all for the last half hour while you were rigging up. I'm going to roll. Oh, it's just great. because did I have sex no. No, not at all. I got a roll, man. My my You're daughter's in town night every night. What's going on over there? My daughter's in town. I've got oh. to spend time with her for five weeks. She lives on the other coast, so gotcha. it is nice to uh, it is nice to get with her. And uh, we're gonna watch some shows, man. We've been watching Only Murders in the Building on nice. Hulu. That's fantastic. That's funny. We're digging it. 
it's something my wife will watch. So uh, we've been enjoying that, man. So now nah, it's been great being back, man. I'm glad you guys uh, enjoyed some of the stories in salt. Uh, I didn't post much when I was down there because I was just trying to chill. And uh, for those of you who missed out on the minus one in crab, you missed out. Mm -hmm. I'll just let you in on a little secret. Anyway, I'll leave it at that thought. <laughs> if anybody can find some OG minus ones, let me know. I'll paint some up, but it's yeah, tough. It's but hey, man, it was great to see everybody again, man. Um, good catching up with you all. Thanks for your comments. And uh, I guess I'll see you, what, Travis, this week sometime, right? Yeah, dude. I'm looking forward to it. That's right. I mean. All right, man. I I want to show you a good time, Eric. Don't worry about it, man. Do your best. That's all you could do. You can't control the weather. I, I look, we're gonna fish hard. We'll be uh, there. you know, just want to stay in the boat, <laughs> <laughs> not not get crushed, not come away with a back I, problem or a bleeding kidney listen, or whatever happens when today you. Today I left. Today I left the ramp, and uh, it was okay. It was a little choppy, and about. Whenever I went, went through that time warp and I realized it was new and I'm like, right. we should probably go check some, some other stuff out. And uh, I got out. I got, I'm starting to head back and I get out to the main lake and oh my gosh, it was, uh, it was rough, 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 rough as I had the Camus in so far this year. I tell you, and the boat uh, handles nice. What did you think? We handled it rough. Right. I, Great. Dude, you drive good, man. You'll be, Look, you'll man. Be smooth, you'll be comfortable. I've been in the boat with you. You drive. You could drive your boat in rough water, man. I if respect you guys are your looking, skills. If anyone's looking to purchase a uh, a bass boat and you're thinking about a Camus, Richie over at Thayer's is who I recommend. And it truly is a, a great boat that definitely handles big water for sure. So there you go. And um, we'll talk soon, Eric. All right, I'm going to tell you guys what the bait is. It's uh, because I'm telling somebody on a text right now. It's an is it somebody got it? Uh, it was by Richard A. Manley, Ram Baits. They're no longer in business. Anyway, there you go, man. I'll leave you with that little bit of crankbait history. It's crazy. Richard A. Manley also made baby pig reproductions. Um, and you know, there's other people that have made baby pig reproductions, but uh, not the Ronnie B one. So, yeah, and there's a couple of people still making them, yeah. and there's a couple of people modifying them, including. Um, Including, <laughs> including, including maybe better versions of it mm. coming soon, uh, potentially. Anyway, okay. one of the best baits ever made for shallow water cranking. I do want to address one thing. I want to address one thing. Curly Q and uh, who else was asking me? MJ. So in the, in my hands right here, I'm rigging up a an older green Legend Extreme. And um, best rod ever, man. I've never had a guide break at all on them. Isn't that crazy? That is uh, one of the best rods ever made. I the, used to love when you would hand it to me and I get to fish with it. I the like newer that. Ones, the newer ones have the carbon fiber and they are delicate. delicate. You just got to be careful. Yeah. Leave it with that thought. You're right. You're right. All right, guys. Thanks for having me on, Trav. Alex, great to see you, man. And uh, Travis, go get him tomorrow. And just remember, time flies when you're having fun, bro. All right, guys, and as always, until next time, we'll see oh. you on the water. <laughs> I was being quiet because you were supposed to. Never mind. We're out. Uh, oh, I'll no, see you on the water. I want to thank everyone. I know it's summertime. You guys got better things to do than listen to Smallmouth Crush live stream. Right. We've been kind of out for a while. We really appreciate you guys joining us. If it was just us three talking, this would get boring. I mean, tonight was boring, but you know what I mean. And, uh, <laughs> I, mean I, I tried to spice it up. I don't know how, how yeah, I did, but I, I tried to save it for you, man. Because, you know, who wants to watch you rig it up? And you came in flat like soda, dude. You got to explain to me offline what's going on, bro, because you said you were out. You were done. You were cooked. And I'm like, what's that mean? And you're like, where do I start? Just contemplate life choices, bro. 10-4. Well, that's been a frequent theme. That's not the first time. Okay. I, I, truth be told. I get it. I think a lot about life, man. There Somebody said a, wa a wise man thinks about his death often. Oh yeah. A, wi a wise man is. I think it's it's like a prophet said or something like that. I don't know who said. I can't attribute the quote to anybody, but I think I read it somewhere recently. A wise man thinks about his death often. I'll leave with that thought. It is kind of more. I don't. 
Okay. But why? Just think about it. Don't comment on it. Don't judge it. Just think about it for a minute in silence, not with me on the phone. Tonight, I'll leave you with that thought. God, you are something. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Until next uh, time. See you on the water. water. <laughs> Peace. God.